Well, hello everyone, and you join us here today, Tom and I, to talk about watches. But as you know, over some of the recent episodes, we've got a little bit bored of each other. And so we have been bringing in other people to um, act as a bit of a mediator between our disputes. And today, we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Justin Hast. Hello, Justin. How are you doing? Andrew, good morning. Tom, good morning. An absolute pleasure to be with you this fine Monday morning. Hello. We were just discussing before recording how how optimistic Justin is this morning. He is very bubbly and very fun. And I think he's going to inject a little bit of positivity into the lives of me and Tom and hopefully even out this, what could have been a very, very dour chat. Um, Justin, for the benefit of our audience, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into watches and what, what you like to do with them? Mm. Do you know what, Andrew? It's, um, so to start with, I'm still very much trying to understand what it is that I do. That's that's completely true. I, I, I struggle, you know, at the dinner party when you're sitting next to someone, they say, what, what, what what industry are you and what do you, what do you do? And it's really hard sometimes to sum that up. I but don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I work in watches. I work in watches. And I think the, the, the only way I could probably position it is that I try my best to share stories about watches. And, and that's on two sides. That's um, writing stories about watches and, and mainly the people involved in watches, the people that either wear them, collect them or make them. Mm -hmm. And, and as well as writing about them, I, I tend to prefer actually, because I'm, I'm quite a poor writer actually, I've got highly dyslexic, and I prefer to take photos of people wearing watches and, and try and tell their stories either through stills or film. Um, increasingly film, and either sort of presenting it or helping to produce film uh, for media outlets or brands. But of course, as you guys know, the landscape for media and, and, and brands has changed so much in the last five, 10 years. It's, it's very difficult to decipher who is who. And, and, and actually you guys have, you know, watch, watch finder have, have done a hell of a job of becoming a, a huge publisher of fantastic content, particularly video content that has then given you the, the, the opportunity to, um, to sell to clients. So I, I'm sort of there and I'm, I'm very much independent. So I, 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 I was at Revolution Magazine for over a year where I had a real great experience, a wonderful opportunity to go and meet with brands, worked with Waco there. Um, I also have worked, I was working at the same time with Monochrome Watches and Frank Gielen in, in the Netherlands there, which I mm -hmm. owe a huge amount to because he was the first guy to give me an opportunity to write about watches. Um, and he was direct in his feedback, which helped sort of refine um, that that process a little bit because I was, you know, I was probably early twenties at that point, and this was about ten years ago. So, um, and then subsequent to that, I've written for for a number of different places, Hadinki over the years, uh, SJX. Um, uh, yeah, and it's just a, it's a real variety. So every week, it's like I just check the inbox, see what's going on. It could be uh, it could be a, an opportunity to go to the Langer, the, the Concourse d'Elegance that's coming up at Hampton Court in the next week or so to write a story or take some shots, or it might be um, more recently doing some work to design a watch with 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 a brand or an independent brand, be part of that design process. So yeah, it's 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 all things watches is the answer there, Andrew. All things watches, but not an easy one to talk about on a first date. That's for sure. I've had many experiences talking. <laughs> talking to, to, to various wonderful women over the years who sort of, there's a little raised eyebrow. Sorry, there's there's an industry, there's a watch industry. You talk about mechanical watches. You talk about things that are crazy <laughs> expensive. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, but yeah, it's a passion. And like you guys, it's a, it's something that really grabs you and um, it's impossible to, to shift it once you're deep into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you mentioned kind of diversifying yourself more into the video side of things and um, your own YouTube channel. There's a bit more of a push into that, I see, which is really exciting. So uh, we're going to put a link to that down in the description. And I'm saying that now because if I wait until the end, I will forget. One of the videos um, that you've recently published is about the two watch collection. And that's what I'd really like to talk to you about today because Tom and I have been amassing um, between us a few watches here and there and we were wondering if there is opportunity for us to slim that down what i was interested in was what was your take on that what i mean i, mean, I guess everyone's got their own take on it but how do you feel about the two watch collection is there are there certain boxes that you feel need to be ticked or is it quite a, a broad kind of spectrum that you could land on with with two watches how do you feel about it yeah, Tom, no, to be honest, and thank you very much for the kind support. I mean, I, I'm amazed that um, you guys have seen it. I'm, 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 I'm touched, humbled that you've seen it. Uh, we've done three into we've done three interviews already. We've got a fourth actually coming this week with a really great friend of mine who's on Instagram at um, Vintage IWC, a guy called James Green, who's got this incredible one-of-one -one, uh, IWC Vintage Ingenieur that was made 
for a Dutch collector. Um, no, and the reason that, that I was so inspired, Tom, to, to look at this as a series was just because I love... I love getting that honest take from people who have bought watches, right? So it's one thing just to share a new launch, but I felt, and I have always felt that the real power is in those personal stories. And I personally love this idea of editing, this idea of restraint. How do we find editing? How do we find curation? And I'm not the best at this, particularly when it comes to, to watches, but I aspire to the two watch collection. Now I'm, I'm nowhere near that yet, but I aspire to it and I'm intrigued by it. Of course, you can live with one watch. You can live with no watches, but two watches is that ultimate balance in my mind. If you've got this problem that we all have, which we love, which is this obsession, two watches could tick all those boxes. Um, I like it because we've had a couple of guests that have completely smashed this idea uh, totally. Like TGE recently, Tom Exton, this this really nice chap who normally talks about cars, but he loves watches as well. He came in with a Lauren Ferry and an AP, and they were both sort of, you know, I, I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this, but they're proper, both proper f you watches, right? They're, they're, he, he hadn't thought twice. <laughs> he, had, he hadn't thought twice about it. It didn't need to tick any criteria for him. But some collectors and some enthusiasts out there, it, it does need to tick those things, both for financial reasons and for sort of their own OCD. And I think they need, it needs to be a sports watch. It needs to be a watch that for me has a screw down crown that you can swim in and you can go on holiday with. So whatever that might be, for me recently, that watch would probably be um, an IWC Cousteau Divers watch. Um, part of the GST sort of period, that sort of 80s, 90s period, because it's it's fun, it's different, it's intriguing, it's a, it's a conversation starter, but it's one you're very comfortable, sort of neo-vintage vibes you could definitely wear around the pool. And then the second one has to be something a little bit more formal. Now, it doesn't have to be a hand-wound, time-only, no yeah. subsidiary seconds dress watch, but something along those lines that you could feel more comfortable wearing with a shirt. I mean, those are the typical lines. Whether you stick to them, I don't care, yeah. you know, but I, and I give no brief like you guys were kind enough today to, for me not to give me any idea what the hell we were coming into. <laughs> you, you know, I give, I give, the, I give Is the, that kind. That's completely kind because you get that you get the honest, you get the totally honest uh, kick. And I give the guests no, you know, no insight into what we're going to talk about, apart from obviously it's too much collection. But, you know, I, I don't tell them what they need to bring along. And of course, they have more watches. And a lot of people have commented on me saying, oh, these guys clearly have more than one watch. They're wearing a watch while they're talking talking about their two watches on the table. Of course, <laughs> you know, of course they are. Of course they are. Um, that said, there is a lady coming up who I'm really excited about this month who doesn't uh, have more than two. She just has two. So it, it's it's a really intriguing thing. It's more of an aspirational conversation for me and maybe to tickle that I the itch for me personally than it is for any anything else. Um, budget no object then, Justin. Two watches. Don't do it, Andrew. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Answer that question. Yeah. That's it. It can be different every day of the week. It could be absolutely um, polar polar opposite from Monday to Friday as to what you pick. I'm immediately thinking of two watches right now that just are pure emotion. And that's one thing I hugely believe in when it comes. It's got to be pure emotion. There was a Salmon Dial Royal Oak um, 15202 anniversary edition. So the 2121 caliber yeah. and it was in steel. So it wasn't this more recent one with the white gold case that they launched a few years ago. It was the steel version. And I can remember walking past the watch club in Piccadilly years ago and maybe six, seven years ago. And there was one in the window for 24 grand. So ultimately it was less than the 15202 kind of retails for these days, which is 26 and a half ish. And it yeah. was the salmon dial. And that for me, it, as a friend said, the 15202, it has just enough bling. It's not that bracelet and that case catches the light just enough not to be offensive because I feel like I'm, I'm typically sort of more on the understated side of things um, and I don't want to cause too much of a scene. But I have to say that watch, time only, so less but but more. Um, it's an anniversary watch. It's the Royal Oak. It's, it was the first. It was, to me, it beats the, the Nautilus because it was the first. I love the shape. I love the fact the bracelet isn't too, you know, it doesn't have a central polish like the, the Nautilus does. So, okay, it's that iconic watch. It's that, that 70s vibe. It's that 15202. Then I'm also thinking about the Langer One because for me, the Langer One is the modern day classic. 1994, relatively new watch in its design. Uh, Gunter Blumlein, who's an absolute hero of mine, Massive impact at IWC, Jujia Langer. He was a visionary. He was a guy who was a watchmaker, engineer, leader of men. Um, and he created that, that Langer one. So for me, 38.5, classic Langer one. But which reference would it be 
Oh, it would probably be the steel Langer one with the painted uh, dial. So I, God knows what the reference is, but it's 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 a classic for a reason. So I've gone I've gone pure. I've gone absolutely pure icons. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the icon. I'm a sucker for the icon. I've just realised neither have a screw down crown. So there you go. That doesn't meet any of the criteria that I just outlined. <laughs> <laughs> Broken your own rules. Broken my <laughs> rules. Andrew, Andrew, I can't I can't let you I can't let you go out of it. What are you thinking? Just hit me. T- two off the cuff. What are you thinking? So I I think that I kind of split the difference between what we're talking here. I I want a casual watch that flies a bit under the radar that you can knock about and then the second one is a high concept piece that really deserves to hang from a wall rather than sit on a wrist Mm. um so the first one to be honest i love my tudor black bay 58 so much Mm. and it does everything Mm. and yeah we're talking about cost no object here but the fact that i can wear it and be less stressed out about wearing than i would be if i had Mm. uh i don't know something far more impressive you know because yeah. I, I really like the the bronc pan 50 fathoms as a dive watch really really like that some of the smaller ones of those are just gorgeous but they for me they start getting into the price where i'd i wouldn't then wear it for its purpose whereas with the tudor i have it on when i'm doing jobs and stuff you know yeah um but then the, then the other piece would be the one that i i get out of the cupboard and i put it on my wrist and i wear it for 20 seconds in my living room and go Ooh, and then i put it back again <laughs> <laughs> and, and mop my brow. <laughs> the dust, the light, you can't touch it. Yeah, because because they were the brand that really introduced me to the crazy side of watchmaking, it would have to be an MBNF of mm. some description. Mm. Maybe the one that looks a little bit like a because <laughs> um, I really like the way the sapphire is, like, is milled. <laughs> it's just like a piece of incredible uh, technology if you like um, yeah. i'd love to get max's take on that reference the way in which you sum that up immediately just off the cuff the one that looks like the <laughs> if you said that to him and he said what i've got no idea what you're talking about he's lying he's lying he knows what he's doing but yeah i really love what they do and i think that would probably be the hardest decision would be to pick from all the crazy things that he's made in the past maybe even one of the legacy machines those are fantastic too and have that blend between contemporary and um and classic beautiful beautiful combo yeah lovely and actually that tudor sorry the value to you goes up exponentially because you're so comfortable hap- and happy wearing it you know that 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 yeah. that takes it to a whole other level and I, and I can't discount that and that's one of the key elements in the conversation around the two watch collection is something that makes you feel like you're not even thinking you're just putting it on you're and you're loving it every day that makes that that's where real value is to be had so thank you for yeah those two yeah. killer yeah, I, I really think that's the yeah. case because probably my favourite diver overall, and this might be a surprise to people, is the Royal Oak Offshore Diver. Mm. I love mm. that thing. Absolutely mm. love that thing. Um, You're not tough white. enough for that. No, I'm not. T- <laughs> that would that would look. It would be the same as me walking down the road with like a, a leather studded jacket and a bulldog on a chain. People would be like, <laughs> "What is that man doing?" <laughs> Um, I would love one of those, but I just know that I would I would sweat bullets every second that I wore it. Um, and that, that brings me to an interesting point. A two-watch collection doesn't have to be max budget. Uh, Justin, where would you be putting your money if you were spending just kind of in the lower thousands or maybe even hundreds for a two-watch collection? Mm. I'm immediately drawn to Anne Ordain, uh, the Scottish uh, independent yep. manufacturer. Yep. I think they're doing some amazing stuff. That Their dials particularly, their enamel, their vitreous enamel dials are just absolutely spectacular. Um, I've got a few friends, and I always use this as the sort of the barometer for what's happening out there beyond our own little sort of circle of people that we connect with and speak to because there's a lot of people out there of course who are just your your, your watch buyer and I've got friends who who are outside of the industry of course and then they come to me in the gym and say oh just I just bought this and and the guy worked out an annual day in like two weeks ago and I was like wow that's super cool because you know we'd never talked about it he just found them off of his own bat admittedly he is Scottish so that that may go some way to explain why he came across them but it just that's my barometer for what's going on out there at that price point I also think as you said already Tudor for me are sort of very, very tough to beat right now. I love that um, uh, silver reference, that that 925 silver case variation yeah, they did recently. Cool, the, the taupe, I just love. Saying that, the, the, the Pelagos, the new Pelagos, um, is absolutely spectacular as well. Uh, I tried that on recently and I thought that was wild value. Um, 
Uh, who else is there? I do think IWC, I think the Mark 20 that's just come out, I do think that for the price point, another classic in, it, in yeah, its they design dinner. they snuck that out, didn't they? Yeah. Without telling anyone. That yeah. was just That just appeared. Yeah, they, they have got a habit. <laughs> and I must admit, I feel, I, I haven't asked them about this directly, but they, they, they do sneak out things. It's either through Chris, the CEO, Chris Granger's sort of Instagram, or they sort of just gently let people pick it up. And it seems to be an interesting strategy that is working. And, and, and I think that watch in particular, so I don't know how much it retails for but certainly under five I think and um, maybe four 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 eight um, is, it, is another iconic shape and design that I think needs to be considered screw down crown so it meets those criteria of, of a great everyday a great beta um, I do think the, the new Polaris I think that JLC Polaris admittedly slightly over that 5k budget but I do think the Polaris is actually a beautiful that twin crown that reference with the sort of multi-finished grain finish on the dial is really beautiful um, I love Nomos. Yeah. I still think Nomos are a great call for people. Um, I think Unimatic are doing some amazing things at that price point as well. Uh, you know, a, a super, like a, a 50 Fathom style layout of Diver. Yeah, it's, there's lots out there. I believe you've got a, a Baltic in your collection as well, do you, Justin? Um... Of course, yeah. And they've just smashed it with... Um, this launch they've recently come out with last week, this sort of racing, uh, almost sort of Daytona-esque, more fun Daytona-esque 90s watch, yep. which I think is, again, a very conservative size because that one I've got is 38 millimetres, 38.5-ish millimetres, and it's uh, a compressor-style case again. Really great build quality. Okay, I, it's got a Salita calibre inside, which you know some people will have pushback on, but the build quality of it is second to none, and the, 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 the detailing is wonderful. It's They're, they're doing really great stuff. You're right, Baltic are absolutely smashing it. I think they launched stop, two stopwatches alongside this new reference. So killing it, absolutely killing it. And lovely guys as well. Super cool design. So Justin, what is what is next for you? What's your next big push in the watch space? <laughs> um, do you know what? I think... This- you know, continuing to push into this video stuff. I'm just really loving, I'm loving presenting and being part of video conversations. You know, I, I, um, I'm going to continue to run this series. So the two watch collection is going to be, uh, and my commitment to myself was that, and this is a self-funded project. And I think that's a misconception out there from a lot of people is that, you know, these are sponsored things. The, the, these things are not sponsored. They're not paid for. Um, it's a self-funded project and, um, I'm doing it with, two friends of mine, so Kieran and James. James is one of the guys who I started the Watch Annual with two years ago, um, the book which we publish every year. And, you know, we're just funding it ourselves. And, and every month I'm going to do two of these interviews with um, people from in the industry, out the industry, men and women. And I hope to have a, a good balance of, of all of those, you know, attributes of guests. Um, but no, it's just doing more video. I think we, we're taking the watch annual, the book this year to another level. So we're in the process of publishing uh, or putting together the, the, the sort of groundwork for 2022 edition, um, which is going to be available on Netta Porter and Mr. Porter this year, which we're very excited about um, and has a, a, a an almost equal balance of male and female contributors this year, which we're, we're really quite excited about. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's lots, lots going on there, actually lots going on. And, and, and I think what a time for watches it's, um, you know, we've had obviously a big two years of, of crazy prices, um, and, and crazy interest. And now we're, we're moving into another phase. And I think maybe a, a more interesting phase where we're starting to, to, to see, um, you know, those that were in it for a short sort of flash in the pan moment maybe aren't going to be around for the next 12, 24 months. But maybe we're seeing more and more people sticking around for the conversation, which is going to be really mm. exciting. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. There's um, there's a lot of doom and gloom over some of the, the watch brands that are becoming less affordable, but there's so much more backfilling that that's actually really, really exciting. Um, well, dear viewer and listener, please make sure to go and read, watch and purchase everything that Justin is putting out. Uh, there'll be links in the description below. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and having a chat with us, Justin. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, we hope to do more chit chats with you in the future. Um, please do like, comment, subscribe. That's I'm looking at you, Justin, and saying that too, as well as you, dear viewer and listener. <laughs> and we <laughs> we will see you all next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thanks, boys.